the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Add it. God bless everybody. Hope everybody having a great morning. <laughs> you know, I, I want to be able to sit and say this. Just like I do on TikTok, have you checked your fruit today? If you haven't checked your fruit, check it out because you need to bear the fruits of the Spirit. Amen. One of the things I want to be able to talk about today, uh, I thought it was a great revelation, and, and I'd like to see what you think about it. Uh, it's, it's concerning your offering, right? It's concerning the offerings of those who who seek to please God, you know, because it's really always been about pleasing God, you know. I like it's in the Hebrews 11, uh, 6. Without faith, it's impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a reward of those who, what, diligently seek him. I say what sometimes because some of us know, some of us know the word of God and 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 not to say everybody you don't need to know everything about what the word of god is saying uh by you know memory and so forth but you do need to really get some foundational scriptures that we stand on right uh so we can continue to open and speak life coming out of our uh our mouth amen there's a death of life from the power of the tongue and we speak it we speak life we speak victory amen you know, so well, anyway, uh, God bless you. I'm going to pray and then we go get started. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to worship and praise your holy name. You say with two or three, God in your name, you've been in the midst of them. Heavenly Father, now invite and receive the presence of the Holy Spirit. Lead us and guide us in all truth. This is the day that the Lord has made and we rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. I thank you, Father, for what you're about to do. I thank you, Father, for those who will actually take time and, and uh, hear this, this uh video the session that we're doing today uh and be a blessing to them uh all i know is that i'm supposed to just sit there and preach the gospel uh and teach the word of god from my understanding and that's that's what i'm supposed to do and i pray father that you just move me out of the way let the holy spirit have his way let's go ahead and focus on the thing that you want said and done and in jesus name we pray amen 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 all right you know one, so what I was talking about, uh, just the one, you know, I like, I like to share some of those nuggets that I, that I got, uh, that the Lord gives me. I think it's, it's very important to share what the Lord is saying to us, uh, to and you, to me, and, and we should share those things, right? I, I do encourage every, every believer, uh, to share the revelation that God gives you because it's, it's not necessarily just for you. It's for other people too. And some people I know that, some people may sit there and say, well, I know, I like my mom sometimes when I talk, I get revelation. She says, I know that. I said, well, you know, that's good that you know it. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes other people, sometimes get to talk through a revelation, uh, understanding God's word. And in our cases, the revelation it's, it's, it, it should line up with the word of God. So that's sometimes you're gonna get uh, segments or pieces of understanding of what God is saying. Uh, that's just part of that's just part of life, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, but the key to it is that we, if you have a revelation that God has given you, uh, take that time to, to share with somebody else because not everybody knows the revelation. You know what I mean? Not everybody knows, uh, not everybody has heard from God. And sometimes people need a revelation from God through you as a confirmation. In other words, he's talking to you, been talking to you. And in some cases, you you don't get it. You know, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't uh you didn't share it. And uh, they hear it from God, but they're not they need confirmation from God to to say, uh, yes, Lord. Uh, thank you, and I will do, right? And so that, that's a good thing sometimes to share a revelation of God just because somebody else may need it, all right? So what I was sitting there talking about, I was looking at uh, 
when we talk about the, the political divide in this country, I keep saying this to myself, uh, especially when you're talking about the, the discord of hate and all that stuff, you know? Because cause I, cause I know that a lot of people, a lot of things that goes on in this world is really based on uh, people trying to get the power. It, but some people don't understand that the, the especially like we talk about the, the political parties, uh, a lot of jockey for power for uh, for power sake, and they incorporate as many types of groups in, with them to to get the power, and not understand that those groups have an expectation, have an outright expectation uh, for something to happen or change that may not be in the interest of the country or uh, or in the world. You know, like the in my fact, let's. let's the thing is going on in Ukraine right now. You know, I, I really, I forgot. I should have just prayed for. Let's pray real quick. Father, we pray for the people of Ukraine. Uh, we pray, Heavenly Father, for their strength and endurance to, to fight against the enemy, especially when they go into the cities. Uh, those, those tanks and those soldiers. Lord, I just pray, Lord, to give the, the Ukrainians the, 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 the tenacity. To, to bog them down in those cities and make them realize that they, they can't come in there. Uh, they can put as many soldiers in there, but they're gonna find out they got millions and millions of people to fight against and they don't have enough. I pray Heavenly Father, Lord, to just strengthen them and, and have, keep their resolve so that they can push the enemy out. I pray for the, the world nations and to, to come together and, and, and create no-fly zones and, 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 and try to protect the people from, from uh, an enemy who probably most of the people is fighting against them don't even know what's going on. Help, Father, to, to, to turn this situation around and allow us to, to start learning as nations, especially uh, civilized nations, especially uh, nations with what they call superpower to operate responsibly. I pray, Father, to touch uh, Putin's heart, to change his mind. And, and, and change the nation of the Russian people's mind to do that with the acceptable on that side. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. You know, one of the things about even with what you're seeing going on in Ukraine uh, and, and what's happening with a nation such as Russia, you ask yourself, is, is that, uh, what fruit is that being bearing when, when you see something like that? And you realize that that's not the fruit of God. So you know that's not of God. The Bible says that Satan come to steal, kill, and destroy. Uh, these people were moving their nation, their country, in a direction of peace and working with other nations, uh, living in peace. And and now you got another country that was prospering in their own given rights that God has given them, and they decided to uh, want to reach back. You know, think about it. When the man was saying he wants to go back, but I digress. What one of the things is that I want to talk to you about, though, is uh, is using that as an example about division and, 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 and trying to uh, uh, why people hate people. And why people want to go back, there's people even in this country that when you talk about the uh, political divide or the racial divide sometimes in this country, is that some people want to go back to an era where other groups of people uh, are oppressed and, and they, they, they feel that that's, that's where we should be, you know? Uh, opposed to the, the, the progression that's been made of people living in harmony, uh, there's people who wants to go back to, and there's people who still have inf uh, parts of the institution designed to, to, you know, keep people down just because they're uh, of their uh, ethnic background uh, or, the, or, the, or the melanin skin. And, you, and, and when you guys yourself, you know, I, I was looking at, you know, when I was looking at the, uh, the, even, even, even the uh, Christians that are, are really heavy on saying we have to do the law, uh, 
and then there's other groups. You know, you got you got Islamic group, you got the Jewish Israeli group, the Hebrews, and so forth, saying that they want to do we should do the law. And 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 I and I remember when somebody sitting and said I needed to do the law because uh, I had so much in me that it was a law that I needed to apply against against my life. And the problem I, I tell, I told it, my buddy I was talking the other day, and I talked to two, I talked to two or three other people as well. And I know why people want to do the law, like you said, because it, it gives them some kind of guardrails to 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 grow in, right? You know, because even the Bible said that with the children of Israel or with man itself, the laws were given as a schoolmaster, right? So sometimes people come in and they feel they need, they still need a schoolmaster, even though they come into the body of Christ. What the problem with that is that the law doesn't profit anyone if they're not going to obey all the laws. There are not some laws, they're all the laws if you're going to do them. For the Jewish people, there's 613 laws uh, in the book of Torah. Uh, so when they talk about following the law, they're talking about following 613 different variations of the law. Or they're talking about, you know, for all of us, they're talking about the way the Ten Commandments, but really they, they're talking 613 different laws. And the reason I, I matter of fact, I thought this said the reason the laws were written in stone was that they're not flexible, they're hardened. There's no mercy or grace with the laws. Laws are black and white. It is you do or you don't. And when I, I, I sit there and try to wonder, like when uh, the, the children of Israel, the one positive of their laws was to have the first of all these festivals uh, that they're supposed to have every year. Uh, and then they got the Jubilee uh, that you're supposed to do in what, 50 years and so forth. <coughs> where you actually uh, give people back their property, uh, freedom from their debt, freedom from anything that they owe, uh, different types of meals you're supposed to do during the holiday, uh, celebrating uh, the uh, being delivered, taken out of Egypt. Uh, there's the one holiday where they're supposed to be in Booth uh, to remind them what their life was when they came out of Egypt. Uh, there's the sin offerings, the sacrifices, the annual sin offerings uh, that's supposed to be done. And the Jewish people don't do that today. And one of the reasons they said it, and I was talking to a friend about it, they don't do it because they said the temple is not there. And, and, and I wanted to uh, use that background backdrop to talk about sin offerings talk about our offerings to God and what is pleasing to God. And I want you to know the sacrifices, the, the blood sacrifices uh, started not with, with Moses' laws. They started all the way back in Genesis. Uh, the sacrificial laws. So it it, 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 and then even the, the temple came later. The Jewish people already had these, these different types of sacrifice they're supposed to be doing. Uh, the Hebrews uh, were supposed to be doing. Uh, even the, if you're talking about being Islamic, you talk about sacrifices that you're supposed to be doing if you're following the law. If you're saying you're following the Mosaic law, then there's were the animal sacrifices for sin offerings and uh, that you're supposed to do. This is this is the law. It's, it's, and the fact is that without blood, there is no remission of sin. That 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 is written in the New Testament concerning the Jewish uh, principles, right? So what I'm saying is that sacrifices, offerings, blood sacrifice offerings to God by animals. <laughs> Uh, by man killing animals uh, is, is, is so the concept has been going on forever. You know, I mean, from the beginning anyway. And it was there, all of those sacrifices, bulls and goats and 
and, and other things were done uh, for the, the the purpose of uh, foreshadowing the real ultimate sacrifice, which is Jesus Christ. Uh, that 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 is the that was the that that that's a sum total really of the gospel is understand that the sacrifices uh, were done uh, for the whole purpose of, of uh, dressing sin, dressing transgressions that a person may have been doing, all right? So, so I, I definitely wanna make sure people understand that if you're gonna follow the law, then you, you need, if you don't, if you're not gonna use Jesus Christ, if you don't believe in Jesus Christ, then you, you have to do sacrifices, uh, blood sacrifices in the temple. The temple came much later. The actual sacrifice and offerings, uh, that, that I tell you, uh, was always uh, instituted all the way back in the beginning. That's what I want to talk about. Is the, is the, uh, <laughs> the importance of uh, doing uh, if you're gonna follow the law, then you, you have to you have to do the the laws itself. You have you have no options. I don't see where your options come in at. If if you're not if you're gonna follow the law, then you have to do blood sacrifices. And and there's importance of there uh, there's importance of it too that I want to throw in there today uh, concerning it. Let me see. I'm gonna see if I can share this with you on the screen. Let me get it out of the way. Yeah. I got this. I got a. I got the. The. Uh, I got the. Uh, Esau. They're trying to Bible. Up. So let me see if I can share these. Uh, what Esau is doing. He's showing. All right. One of the things that I was I, I was looking at there was about sin, right? And and uh, there's all probably going to get through. I'm going to bring it up for you. Let's see here. This is Hebrews. Uh, if you can see it, it's Hebrews 9, verse 22. And it said, and almost all things are by the law, all by the law. See what I'm saying? You're going by the law. But it says, in, all, in almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission of sin. You, you, you see I'm coming from? The, the importance of Jesus Christ is that the, you, he, he, was the, he was the ultimate uh, sacrifice for Christianity, uh, the blood offers given. But if you're going by the law, if you... Those who want to live by the law, and you can't, you can't, it's not a pick and choose thing. It's either you do it or you don't do it. Uh, it's, it's just not there. Uh, you got you to understand it. It says right here in Acts 10, 43, and to, he said, to him give all the prophet witness that through his name, whosoever believes in him shall receive remissions of sin. That's the, that's the, the, the part about Jesus is the fact is that the remission of sin is through the blood. Uh, I, I think it says here in Romans uh, 3, 23 or 25, it said, whom God has set forth to be a perpetuation through faith in his blood to declare his goodness for the remissions of sin. Let me sure I get that all the way across. Excuse me. For the remission of sin, that I pass through the forbearance of God, the remission of sin. So it always has been uh, the the it was always been the part about blood sacrifice in the law. It, it was it was by the law that you had to have these blood sacrifices. It said verse Hebrews ten eighteen. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offerings of sin through Jesus Christ. But if you're not doing these offerings anymore uh then the question is what what are you doing right so so let me stop sharing that 
scriptures there, but so to the remission of well, remission of well, blood, uh, there's no remission of sin. So if you're going by the law, that's what I'm just telling you. You can't sit there and say there's nothing written in the Bible that I saw. There's nothing written in the Bible that says that you can't continue to do your offerings, your sacrifices, blood sacrifice of animals and so forth for the remission of sin if you're not in Jesus Christ, but you live by the law. You can't separate, because here's the point I'm gonna catch. This is deep, right? This is real deep. I really hope you get this. 